We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Brick Says Season. How y'all doing? Let me put my phone. Did I? Oh, yeah, I just did that. Let me put my phone to do not disturb. How y'all doing? We just rolling with the punches. I told you I'm here. Quarantine. I'm coming to you live and direct, baby. No pre recorded. Talk to me nice. You already know. Gang, gang, gang. And, um, yeah. Um, how y'all doing? I hope y'all doing good. I hope y'all mental is right. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're thinking about, it's going to get better. It may not look like it. The tunnel does look very dark. It doesn't, we don't appear to see a light, but there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And everything will be okay. Financially, emotionally, and physically. Hello, good morning. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm, that's why I'm here live and direct, to keep us all motivated. You feel me? Um, definitely going to be bringing some very good, well, I hope it's considered good information to you guys. Some good information to you guys. Um, if you listen, if you're a streamer, if you listen on Apple Podcasts and you don't um, watch on YouTube, I'm going to be doing more things on YouTube soon. Not even soon. Yeah, soon. Starting next. Well, starting this week because this episode comes out on Monday. It it technically is pre-recorded, but it's not pre-recorded three months ago. But yeah, I hope you guys are doing good. We got a new episode. You already know how I do. And this is a good topic. These are one of the 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 written down topics. And um, it's it's change of reality. It's about change. I don't know if you guys remember in season two episode one we briefly spoke about change and when we briefly spoke about change it's hot guys because it's supposed to be 85 degrees today so i'm gonna give y'all a little shoulder that's bogus i'm bogus so here we go um we briefly spoke about change in episode one and um i didn't let us dig too deep into it because um that's a whole another topic that's why episode we talking about it's changing reality um and th- this this is gonna be fun for me, I think. Um, so I'm gonna jump, jump right, right, right into it. And you know, before every topic, what we like to do is expand our minds. Expand your mind. Expand your mind. Expand your mind. So, in an article on Huffiest. I'm dead. I, you know, I really hate autocorrect. In an article on Huff, HuffPost.com titled, Do People Really Change? Hello, good morning. Written by Susan Flower states, Evidence points to yes. Hmm. We are constantly changing physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Medical research reveals that the cells in your body change about every seven years. Brain studies reveal extraordinary neuroplasticity enables you to change neural pathways and thus habits and behavior behaviors, mindfulness, research poses exciting possibilities for developing empathy, making better decisions and enhancing emotional regulation, motivation, science points to how fulfilling psych- psychological needs affects almost everything we do and feel. Well, that's good to know, but I, I I personally don't think people change. But, um, yeah, so, I don't, I really don't think that people change. I think, okay, let me, let me get, let me be more direct. I think people change from when they, like, two years old, like, Obviously, like, I think once you hit about, um, let me think, because I want to pick a good number. Okay. Maybe 18. I think your personality and who you are is really established. I do think people, okay, I do think people change a little bit due to circumstances but they still are who they are and let me explain now 
from when you young, you may you young, I feel like we all born very innocent. I don't think if people are born naturally evil. I think people are born naturally good. I think we're all very innocent, sweethearts, doll babies. What what do we call nice men? Gentlemen. Um but through life we go through things and those things will change you. They might make you angry. They might make you happy shit. If you used to be a bum and you get some money, honey, you might become a happy person. Um, But I do think that life molds us. But by 18, you kind of already establish, you know, how you handle things in a way. Even though some people say 18, you're mad and mature. But I, I, I feel like just based off of like, friends and family that I know they all kind of still the same we all are a little different when we get older we get more responsibility we start to I think become more like emotionally angry emotionally disturbed i don't know like i feel like we change in some ways how we handle things but we still like the same because i know like for me a lot of people i know i feel like they're still the same like no matter what but things can happen to you at different ages like i'm 28 now right so i, have something, I could go through something crazy right now that i didn't go through at 18 and it might change me as a person so i do think that in some ways experiences can change you a little bit your outlook but I feel like people are generally the same like I feel like people like personality wise are still the same they might handle things differently like I think when I was younger I hadn't really gone through anything I hadn't when people would go through things and do certain things I didn't really understand why they behaved the way they behaved because I hadn't really experienced much but then as I got older and I started experience a lot of things, meeting a lot of new people, learning a lot of new stories, um, just hearing, you know, a lot of different things, I started to become more sympathetic and less judgmental. So I feel like basically like when I was young, I was more judgmental. Like when people tell me like, oh yeah, I did this, da, 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 or I do this, or if they would behave a certain way, I would be like weirded out that they are behaving a certain way and things like that so i do think that with time people change how they think maybe but they don't change how they move does that make sense like i don't know i just feel like in my experience with people, like, I always be like, oh, I'm going to give this person a chance. I'm going to give this person a chance. And they kind of just remain doing the same shit. And, like, I'm at an age where a lot of people I've known or known, I've probably known for, like, 10 years plus. Like, or even somebody I date. If in three years you still the same motherfucker, you the same motherfucker. That's just who you are. Like, that's just who you going to be. Like, you catch my drift. Like, it's just the way people handle things will always be the same like that's just my own personal opinion i don't think that um i don't think that people generally change like i, I really don't believe that i do like i said i do think that people tend to become more sympathetic the more they go through things and they might be more understanding but personality wise people don't change like they just are who they are um that's just from my experience from what i've seen i don't see growth in people that much i really don't shade with no fucking shade like people are just who they are like i've never seen someone change drastically like some people tell me i've changed i could see that because I've been through some shit. So, like, I would probably used to be, like, really nice. Now I'm, like... <laughs> First of all, I am really nice. Maybe I might do things that's a little bitchy or whatever. But it, I think people, too, make you change as well. Shit. Um, in certain instances. Because I know you're, like, you're confusing me. You're saying people change, but then you're saying people don't change. I think people change how they think and their understanding sometimes. 
but their personality never changes. Like, they still just maneuver the same. Like, they act the same. Like, they might think differently, but they still gonna move the same. Like, I, I wanna give a good example of that. It'll probably come to me as I talk, but people are just who they are. Like, I, I rarely, I rarely see dramatic change. I don't think people really change personality wise. I do think people change in some instances. Maybe, you know, because I think things change people too, you know. Um, huge life changes can change you, right? Um, maybe doing something, for instance, more independently or... When I say more independently, I mean like you might... I don't know, like, if you might leave your house and then you got to pay bills, it might change you or motivate you to do more, right? You might want to like be like, oh, I need to make more money or, oh, I don't like my living situation. I want a house or, like, it'll change your mindset on things. Or if you, for some people, you know, if you go to school or college, right, you kind of blossom you probably used to be really shy, really coy, and now you kind of have a little more personality. Even though in college, I think that if people who usually were shy in high school, they'll go to college and they'll still be shy in college. Like, they just go to parties and be shy. Like, you, <laughs> you feel me? Um, certain life changes do change you. I would think um, maybe marriage might change you, especially if you was a hot ass before you was married, right? If you, if you, But then again, you know, they say you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, baby. So, I don't know. I, I can't speak to that. Um, <laughs> I think, I do think, maybe kids, kids change people, but then there's some people that really, even with kids, they still ain't shit. So, it's, it's, a, it's a weird dynamic. Is it that we don't that people don't change or is it that people don't want to change, right? Because I bring up all these things, but I'm like, it's some people, you got people who have kids, right? And they change. And you got people who have kids and they still ain't shit, right? So it's like, are we choosing to change? Are we choosing not to change? Like, what are we really doing realistically? Like, are we, you know, like, it's change this reality thing, like, is it something we can do, but we choose not to do? And that's a good question. I think change is something probably that we can do. You can change. You really can. If you really put your mind to it, you can change. You really can. Like, for instance, if you're the type of person that always likes to argue, you don't have to argue all the time if you don't want to. Right? Like, you can really just let shit roll off your shoulders, but you choose not to. Um, if you're a nasty person, you don't have to be nasty. You can be nice, but you choose to. You don't have to be mean. You can be nice. Um, maybe it is a choice thing. A lot of people battling with shit, they won't go get help for it. You could go help, go get help, but you choose not to, right? So, I don't know. And is change indefinitely healthy? I think change is healthy. Some people don't like change, right? Um, I think it's a good question to ask because I th do think that sometimes change could be extremely unhealthy. If you're the type of person that's like, keeps it real, always says what's on your mind, and then because one thing happened, you like, I'm not saying what's on my mind no more. I'm not going to be that person no more. I'm not, you know, I'm going to keep all my opinions and thoughts to myself. I feel like you're doing a disjustice to yourself and to people because maybe sometimes your opinion is valid it's just that one or two people didn't agree and that's fine not everybody's gonna agree with you so for you to change just because somebody like outed you or told you you were wrong or because you was wrong once and you're like dang i thought i was right all the time and somebody really shut me down now i'm about to stop you know being myself that's unhealthy to just change because a fear or something or if you like wearing like crazy clothes and stuff and you like wearing different colors and because somebody said oh you look fucking stupid ah 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 your outfit is trash blah 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 and then you just like start dressing really bland and wearing you know cardigans nothing wrong with cardigans you know if you just start 
dressing bland and changing your fashion and because somebody told you they didn't like your outfit or that you look crazy, that could fuck with your mental health because it's like you this wild, colorful person and now you dressed in, in all these neutral colors and stuff and you dress in like mad professional and stuff and you changing who you are because people like told you you look stupid. Now you mad unhealthy. Now you mad sad because you got to look... Like, you, 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 like, somebody that you're not. You know what I'm saying? So, or, you know, being, you know, natural. Having natural hair. Like, you be like, somebody be like, I hate natural hair. I want your hair relaxed. Now, you like your natural hair. You grew the shit out. Now, you gonna have to unpermit. And now, you mad because you got straight hair. Like, it's just, it could be hum unhealthy. Yeah. If you're changing because to acclimate to other people and you're not being yourself. Yeah then change can be unhealthy because you have to be yourself, like, no matter what. Like, even, like, for instance, you know, people gave, what's her name? Brittany, don't forget her name. People gave Lizzo a lot of flack, right? Because she's a plus-size woman and she, you know, flaunts her stuff. She shows her butt. Her butt is not plastic surgery. She got cellulite. Honey, she got a fupa. She is a natural big woman. She not even like these plus size models that still be having little ways, but they body be like boop, bop, boop, bop, boop. She's really plus size, right? So, because she's plus size, and, and y'all can say what y'all want to say. That's really the real tea is that people don't want to see it because she's plus size. Because her body is not fake, because her butt is not perfectly round, because her stomach is not flat, because her cheeks are not, like, y'all don't want to see it. And I feel like, because, at first I'm like, is she doing this for attention? I think she's doing it to make a statement. But what if that's who Lizzo is? What if that's how she want to be? Like, a lot of these little IG models, that's all they do, put their ass on the internet. Um, bitches is out here sucking bananas on the internet. Like, let's be serious. Like, um, uh, uh, on Quarantine Radio, I heard Quarantine Radio is basically something Tory Lanez was doing. And, um, <laughs> some girl, I'm putting milk on her butt. And I'm pretty sure she got some flag for it, but I'm quite sure she didn't get no Lizzo flag. Like, hello, good morning. Y'all want Lizzo to put on a fucking straight jacket? Like, maybe that's who she is. And then if she start dressing like fucking Adele, remember Adele when she was on um, big? She was wearing fucking, like, that bitch always look hot. Like, I'm hot now. Think about that shit. It's hot. It's 85 degrees. Well, it's gonna be 85 degrees in New York City today. I don't know if the the heat is, is picking up, baby. But I don't want to show my arms. But yeah, look, see, I, I got Adele tendencies. Adele was wearing fucking God knows what. Like, she was wearing these big oversized outfits, honey. Like, please stop. Please, please. You would never catch Adele doing a Lizzo. <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? But I feel like that's who she want to be. And then I feel like if she was to change, if she was to start dressing, like, really, like, conservative, we would all be kind of, like, low-key, like, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch? Like, I think we would think, like, she going through a crisis. Like, I'm dead at I personally would. I'd be like, oh, my gosh, why is Lil dressing like Adele circa 2015? Like, what's going on? I would think she was on drugs, honestly, if she started dressing like that. It's to the point I'm so accustomed to her being her. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I do think that change can be unhealthy, um, but I do think it can be healthy as well because a lot of the things we do is not always needed. Like, I think a lot of us feel like, who I am is who I am, I'ma be me. Like, and that's a, that's a person I really hate as a person who really feel like, you ever know somebody who they do dumb shit all the time or they do grimy stuff all the time they're like, that's just who I am. Like, I'm me. This is me. This is who I am. And it's like, well, you need to change that shit because that shit's not cute. Sometimes change is healthy. It is. It can be very healthy. Like, some people... Like, I remember... Two times. I remember with somebody that I was cool or whatever. And then, so, then they were just always doing dumb shit. Somebody was like, that's who they are. they always been like this. So, why are you getting mad? And I'm just like... You are so right. Why am I getting mad? Let me get the fuck up out of here. Because this is who they are. 
They don't have no, 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 they don't have no reason to change it. The person was trying to tell me, this is who I am. You already know that you've been cool with me for years. Why the fuck am I getting mad? And I'm thinking like, damn, you right. You really ain't shit. So it's either, and you obviously have no, what's the word? No thought in changing. So it's either I'm going to stay and deal with your bullshit or I'm going to get the fuck up out of here. Right? I chose to get the fuck up out of here because that person has no, they're not going to change. That's who they are. Some people are who they are. That's why I say I think some people don't change because I know people like that or people who be like, this is just who I am. I'm just like, uh, like when people tell me that, I'm like, damn. The, for me, when somebody say that to me, I'm like, you basically give me an ultimatum. And most of the times, like nine out of ten, I'm gonna stop fucking with you. I'm not gonna stop fucking with you completely, but I'm gonna probably like diminish you a little bit. Like that's that's who you are, and that's beautiful that you wanna be that way. But I don't want no parts because that's not the type of person I fuck with. You feel me? Um, and not everything is that deep, right? Like, it could be something small. Like, to some, this might not be small. Like, maybe they always like, I don't know. Maybe they always make like little mistakes. Like, I don't know. Maybe they always late. Always being late is rude. But that's not a means for me to stop fucking with you. Like, some people be ODing. Like, I'm not about to stop being a friend because you always late. Or whatever the case may be. That's just who that person is though. It shows they have no change. It shows that they don't have any. They don't want to change. And they don't want to be on time. But it's not a means of me to stop fucking with you. You feel me? Like I'm not about to stop fucking with you. Because you go so late. Um, if you kind of selfish. Because sometimes always being late could correlate with. Being stingy. Um, making things about you. Like. One thing fuck up with you, you you fucking lose your fucking your fucking jacket, and now you mad the whole fucking day, bitch. Like now you fucking up everybody's day, or you know you know what I'm saying. Like some people just are self centered. That's not something I want to be around. Like people who just like me 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 me. Those are things. That I don't want to be around. But somebody who's self-censored is like, Brittany, you know this is me. Like, you know I'm all about me. Me, me, me. And you know I've been like this for years. Like, why you keep getting mad? And I'm just like, wow, you're right. So now I have to make an ultimatum. Am I going to continue to deal with this? Is this something I could bear with? Or do I have to exit this situation? The little, the little walking fingers. Do I have to exit stage freaking left? And I've been in situations where I exited. Not often. I I rarely leave. If it's like friends or family, you know. Um, Some people are like, I just can't take it. But for the most part, I'll just fall back. I won't completely stop fucking with you. Because if you was cool with somebody, it's certain stuff you like about them. Like, I feel like your cons got to really outweigh your pros for me to stop fucking with you. Like, OD. Like. I might step back from you, but I'm not going to diminish you completely at all. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, when is change needed? And when is it okay to stay true to yourself? So that's a good question, right? When, because that kind of correlates with everything we were just talking about. When is change needed? That's a good question. Um... I feel like for some people, you should know that you need to change when you're looking around and you start seeing all your friends and your family just dropping like flies from you or or you, you start noticing like, you. it's a point in time when you got to realize, oh my gosh, it's me, right? When you're looking around and you're like, yo, I used to, I remember I used to hang with Blase Blase, now they don't fuck with me. I remember I used to hang with Blase Blase, they don't fuck with me. I'm about to be cool with like bitch. <laughs> and I hate those people too. Like all your people don't fuck with you, but you think you think it's dumb and not you. Like bitch, something wrong with you. If everybody stop fucking with you, like it's not them, it's you. Like they those people that be like, 
I don't have friends because, like, people just keep hating on me. Like, people be jealous of me. Like, like I'm cute. My hair is fly. My nails is fly. My outfit is fly. And, like, every time I get friends, I can't really keep them. Something's wrong with you. And you need to get help. Like, if you can't keep a friend... Bitch, if you can't keep a cousin, if you can't keep a fucking sister, a brother, and I mean in a relationship-wise, like, just keep good, strong relationships, you're fucking toxic, sis. Like, you're toxic. If your best friend is your mama, because let me tell you, some people, mother, they not going to stop fucking with you no matter what. Your mother going to love you unconditionally, whether you crazy or not. Some, not all parents is like that. So, if you think, oh, my mother fuck with me, my mother tell me I'm a vibe all the time. No, your mother loves you. And God bless her. God bless her for dealing with your crazy ass. Okay? Like, people be like, look around. Like, really, you know, for people, if you watch this video and you, you be losing friends and family, people keep dropping from you, you need to really sit back and say, what the fuck am I doing wrong? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know me, I, I do drop people a lot. Not I don't like saying drop because that's not true. I don't drop people. I fall back from people. But I never really like get into big disagreements where it's like tragic with the majority of my friends. Because I've been through things where, you know, I start fucking with people and I started being like, damn, what the fuck is wrong with me? And I look around and I still got the same people in my circle. You know what I'm saying? Like, or uh, if I go to work and I can't get along with some people at work. I'm like, damn, what the fuck wrong with me? But then I look around like, but everybody else fuck with me. <laughs> you know, like, it's just certain variables that make people not fuck with you. But if it's a constant, like, you looking around and you just see everything dropping like flies. Or oh, shit, it don't even have to be people. If you just see your life crumbling, like, every minute it's like, damn, this happened, this happened. And mind you, things happen in life all the time. Life is fucking hard. But when it's, like, unnecessary shit, like, shit you could have prevented, you need to really start making some changes. You need to step back and be like, what am I doing wrong? You know what I'm saying? Like, and how can I do better? And how can I improve from the situation? Even if it's a situation where you feel like you was right, but you got the short end of the stick, sometimes you need to sit back and say to yourself, all right, I got the short end of the stick. I was right, but I fucked up. Where could I have done better? Um, in some cases, we, we need to do that, like... And I think that's when we need to establish when change is needed. When we start looking around and we just start seeing everything is fucked up. Like, everything. Everything bad business. Like, girl, what's going on? Like, hello, good morning. <laughs> you feel me? Like, it gotta be times where you kind of like... Just look. Just look at your surroundings. Look at your life. Nobody likes to look at their life. And just say, what What am I doing specifically why people or why things keep fucking up around me? That's when you need to establish that change is needed. When, you know, even I'm having a fucking, what's that word? Like a thought process like, yo, a lot of shit be getting fucked up lately. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Not everything. I'm exaggerating. But I, it's certain things... Like, one spectrum of my life that just keep... I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I already know what the answer is, honestly. And, 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 and you know... That's... It's, it's hard, you know. Certain things is hard. Change is hard. Why? Change is hard. Um, and then, now we know when change is needed... And now we need to establish, like I said, when is it okay to stay true to yourself? So, to me, like I said, if you're looking around at everything crumbling around you, obviously staying true to yourself is not the answer. <laughs> Honestly, like... Whatever the fuck you got going on, ain't it, boo-boo. Your shit is not cute, poo-poo. Like, if everything around you is fucked up, bitch, and you think you need to stay true to yourself, that's a problem. Now, the, the term stay true to yourself is key, right? To be successful, to be anything, you have to stay true to yourself. But when I say 
Like, maybe you got, like, cute personality traits, but you need to figure out the bad ones. Like, what what are you doing wrong? Like, sit back. Like, I know we don't like to write down things. Or not even write it down. Just think about it. Like, all right. Think what was the specific issue that happened that me and A stopped talking. Right? Then think about why you and B stopped talking, why you and C stopped talking, why you and D stopped talking. And think where... Did I play wrong? Or where could I have looked like I played wrong? Because some of y'all be in denial about the shit y'all do. Be like, oh, I can see she probably viewed it this way. But I wasn't doing that. But you low-key really was doing that. Boom, boom, boom. And when it comes to life, be like, look back. Reflect on 2019. No point of reflecting on 2020. 2020 is out of our control. Let's just throw 2020 away. Boom, boom, boom. 2020 has nothing to do with anybody. This is America's problem. But 2019... You can look back at 2019 think of all the fucked up shit that happened in 2019, right? And be like, what did I go wrong here? What could I have done better in the situation, right? Think what happened in situation A. That was fucked up. How could I have fixed that? What happened in situation B? Situation B was fucked up. How could I have fixed that? What could I have done better? Why did that happen? Because a lot of shit be happening be like, yo, that's fucked up. That was crazy. Like, you just be mad. You be dealing with trauma, emotional, and you don't even know why the fuck shit happened. A lot of stuff we don't know why happened. Some things just happened for no motherfucking reason. Like, that ass, like, you, you don't even... Some stuff you can't blame yourself for. And I, so, I'm going to make that very clear. Like, because you might experience... I don't know what type of trauma people experience. Like, if you got sexually assaulted or something in 2019, that's not your fault. Like, you can't say, what did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. Like, certain shit is not your fault. But when I say... Like, maybe you fell into the mad debt, credit card debt. You, you could say to yourself, did I have to buy them shoes? Did I need all them groceries? Did I need all those clothes that I bought? I had clothes in the house. You feel me? Did I have to get that weave? I could have just got the regular weave from AliExpress. Like, you gotta make... Did I have to buy a $400 wig? I could have just learned on YouTube. Maybe this year, 2020, while I have nothing to do, I'm going to learn how to make wigs. You feel me? Like, shit like that. Like, did I... Like, you got to start playing out your finances and shit. Like, damn. Like, shit is wild and necessary. Like, this is why I'm in debt. And this is why I'm going to court. Because motherfuckers... This is why <laughs> I'm in collections, bitch. Or you could be like... Why did I lose this job or something? Like, it could be anything. Like, y'all got to start. Like, if you had a fucked up year. And all y'all be claiming. Every year, everybody had a fucked up year since, like, 2014. Like, since 2014, motherfuckers be like, 2015 my year. 2016 my year. 20 Bitch, every year, yeah, yeah. Every year, you fuck up. So, we all. And that's even me. Since I be fucking up every year. Shit. We need to write down, as a collective, where do we need to see change? Because, <laughs> bitch. We got to find a way. We gotta find a way. Like, if every year, every year wasn't your year, bitch, you gotta figure out. You gotta lay it out, and you gotta figure out where do you need change. That's that's when you can't stay true to yourself. When every motherfucking year is some bullshit. It's one thing to have one problem a year. Some of y'all be having one problem, and I get that. Some one problem could be a catastrophe. But y'all be having one problem and it ruin your whole year. Like, if you had more ups, like I said, more pros than cons, you had a decent year. But if every year it be some crazy, wild, like, three bad things happen, you gotta, you gotta, and when I talk about life, I mean life changes, like, life changes. Like, y'all need to write that shit down and figure out what was the issue. Um, and it's one of the biggest questions why is change so hard? I remember I was in therapy for three years. And that's when I learned the term. Change is hard. And I was like, damn, ain't that the tea? Um, why is change hard? Why is it so hard for us to change? Why? I don't get it. Now that I'm saying it aloud. You just used to yourself. like, And sometimes I think change is hard because you don't really... Know what it is that you need to change. Like, people might be like, you do this, but, and I don't like it. And it's like, I ain't mean it that way. Like, I think a lot of times it's communication. And sometimes, like, you might do things a lot. Like, 
but you don't mean no harm by it. Does that make sense? Like, but to that person, you need to change. Like, I don't know. Like, I can't explain. Like, mm, like let me give a little example. Like, maybe like me, I play too much, right? So maybe every situation, serious situation, people don't want me to play around, right? Um, I like doing that because it makes me feel better. But somebody may feel like I need to change, change those behaviors or something like that. So it's kind of like, damn, but if I change that, then when shit get crazy, I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to be sad. And we all going to be sad. And that everything will be fucked up, bitch. And then, like, that's a coping mechanism for me. Now I got to change my coping mechanism. Um, do I need to create balance? You get what I'm saying? And it's hard to create balance. How do you create balance? How do you how do you not laugh or make a joke to help you in a situation? I guess the balance would be like, as soon as this shit pop off, be serious. And then when you get home, make a joke about it. When other people are not around, maybe go in the bathroom, sit in the toilet, and just start joking about the shit that's fucked up on your own time. But in the moment, you can't do that. Boom, change. But see, that's the problem. Some people don't want to change. They're like, yo, as soon as shit pop off, I'm about to start joking around. I'm not going in the bathroom and joking around with myself. That shit is corny. Change is hard. Um, it is. Because a lot of the things that people want us to change is really sometimes helpful to us. For ourselves. And, and that's how we cope. And that's how we deal. But every way we cope. And every way we deal is not good, you know? Um, you can't live like that. Like, you just can't. You can't. Um, I think that's why change is hard. And I think also, too, because, like, if you've been living your life the way you've been living your life for so long, right? To some, you be like, why am I changing? Like, like for instance, I'm 28 now. So, for 28 years, I've been me. And now you want me to change? Like, what's up? Like, that's a long time to have lived and be you. <laughs> and then motherfuckers want you to change. Like, imagine being 50 and somebody's like, you know what? For the past 50 years, I've been with your ass. And you do the same shit. And it's just like, well, I've been doing this for 50 years. So, hope now. 50 years is a long time to be a piece of shit. <laughs> And now you want me to change, bitch. If you've been doing it for a while, even 10 years, and then somebody, you get in a relationship with somebody, somebody finally call you out on your bullshit, bitch. That's how it starts. And then you bring it up like, da 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 told me, me and him was arguing, and he told me, I always blah, 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 blah. And then your friend be like, you do always do that. And then you be like, you just agreeing with him. You ain't never bring that up before. I ain't never bring it up because I ain't want to hear your mouth. But you really do that all the time, Brittany. Like, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so, it's like, y'all let me do this for 10 years. Now you want me to change? Like, what's up? <sighs> so, I think that's the other reason why change is so hard. Especially, like, if you've been doing something from 18. A lot of times when you do stuff like 16, 17, 18, a lot of people don't call you out on your bullshit like that. Then, when you start going to work, going into the work field... And you work with people who don't give a fuck about you. Because I work motherfuckers really don't give a fuck about you. You might have one little friend here. They're going to call you on your bullshit. Right? When you get into a relationship. They give a fuck about you. Real, real give a fuck about you. And they're going to call you on your bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, all this time you was mad young thinking you was cute. Thinking your lifestyle was cute. And then you get older. And it's going to be people who call you on your bullshit. But this shit is just getting addressed. 10 years into my life, I've been doing it for 10 years. Somebody finally calling me out on it. Now I gotta figure out a way to change it. You know, now I gotta learn a way to create balance. And I think that's what makes change so significant, significantly <laughs> hard. Um, do I believe I have changed as a person? Me? Sure. I do. A little bit. I'm quite sure I have some of the same attributes attributes that I've always had because people tell me that all the time like you still the same you still act just the same da, 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 da. like I'll be like what the fuck does that mean <laughs> but um I have changed and I know that for a fact um like I said 
life will flip fry dip and dye your ass like and that's just a period like you gotta change you gotta get acclimated to the to the world to you to your body to life to everything like you have to like you, you you're gonna i think you're gonna change a little bit but never personality wise like when i think people say you're still the same i think they're talking about personality wise but like mind even this year like my mind has changed on so many things like the way i think about things or how i feel about things has changed significantly that i never thought before like i feel like my mind is so expanded now on so many things so many topics i am very more sympathetic for so much things like oh my god I don't think I understand because, like I said, with life, it brings you so many things. Even, like, engaging with people, you might not even experience something. I could, somebody could tell me a story, and I'd be like, well, I never thought that that could happen. And now I could see why A, B, and C sometimes happens to people or things like that. You never really know, like, people's situations and stuff like that. So, yeah, um... Do does change require life circumstances such as laws, finances, and fame, which we've been talking about briefly in this episode? I do, I do, I do think change requires life circumstances, like a loss, right? You lose a parent, you gotta grow up fast if you lose them young, right? If you lost both of your parents, or maybe your father was in your life, or whatever the case may be, right? Now you thinking like, oh, I don't got my mom. So, like I know that with people who like lose their parents at a young age or whatever, they got to figure out like, oh shit, how am I going to, where am I going to live? How am I going to pay rent? Like they're forced to grow up really fast. Oh, um, like everything your moms do for you, you got to dance, figure that shit out by yourself. Like, uh, I got to cook dinner. <laughs> it could be anything tiny. It could be anything small. And um, I think growing up fast teaches you maturity and things like that. Um, money. Losing it all. Imagine you lose everything. You lose your job, you lose your money. A lot of people during this COVID-19 who was always up, they now they're hitting down. Right? It's going to humble you, right? When you got to file for unemployment. You never thought you had to file for unemployment. I see somebody put up a post like, I went and got me a... Um, essential job i'm working at the supermarket i refuse to file for unemployment well you look dumb you look stupid because i don't know who the fuck you're trying to impress that's number one um but hey do you some people they, they don't want to file for unemployment like they never thought that day would come but also people need to understand if you are that type of person it's not your fault it's not like you're filing for unemployment because you're being lazy like you literally <laughs> lost your job like you literally got laid off you literally got furloughed like it's really not your fault like you you can't get a new job right now like that at least that you want you could go get a new job you could go be a central worker you could go work at target you could work at the supermarket by all means the only job that's open where you could get big money probably is to be a doctor but you have to go to school for that school is closed <laughs> like you, you gotta pick one or the other you gotta get on the play bit or you gotta be a essential worker you don't have much options right now like you don't so if you don't want to humble yourself and join the unemployment line that's on you sis um health insurance and like a lot of people really getting humbled and they like damn at least for me, too, I thought about it like, damn, it's people who really could lose it all at any moment. Because some people get laid off. Before COVID, a lot of these companies was broke and bummy. Like, I know my job, before COVID, they did layoffs. Before we even could predict this would happen, they were doing that. So, some people go through these things before this shit even happened. You get what I'm saying? And it's not easy to get a new job so fast. So I think certain situations when it comes to finances, it humbles you. It makes you look at people different. It makes you understand people and um, things like that. And fame. I could imagine how fame would change a person. Um, 
personality wise maybe how their family look at them how their family treat them differently or just or even just the stress of being the the only person in your family with the most money and now you feel like you gotta um what's the word take care of everybody and just that stress like you you probably like me like when I do YouTube right I'm like damn I wanna be more consistent I wanna be more consistent da, da, da. if I had people relying on me I would have to be very consistent right with celebrities they probably have days where they're like I wanna go to bed I don't want to do no shows. I don't want to dance. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I want to take a sick day. Like, you know how we take sick days? Like, can, like, a TV show host take a sick day? Like, I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's your show. Not if you have two people on the show. But, like, can you really take a sick day? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got so much people relying on them. Like, can they quit their job? Like, they could quit it if they want, but... I'm quite sure before they quit, like, yo... All the producers here... They gonna lose their job. My showrunner gonna lose their job. Like, if I quit my job, I just lost my job. Like, not the people around me, unless I was a CEO. Yeah, every motherfucker up under me lost their job. Because <laughs> I'm close to this company, bitch. But if you, like, if you just a manager at the job, like, you just lost your job, they gonna hire somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So... I feel like I could imagine fame just changing you in a sense of like the amount of responsibility you get. Seeing everything. Like imagine just being able to just tour the world the world in one year. Like regular day person they could tour the world in one year if they have the money, but like regular day middle class um low class citizens It'll probably take us 20 years to tour the whole world. You get what I'm saying? Just imagine doing that all in a year. Going to every club, doing every show, meeting many people. You, you already did that shit. Like, what is life when you've seen it all? Like, what's left for me to see? You get what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of them turn to drugs and stuff. Because they, like, they want to see another world. And drugs going to make you see that. And stuff. So, I do think fame could change a person for the good, for the bad. A lot more for the bad, right? And yeah, girl, I am just on a roll with these episodes. A lot coming your way. Since technically, like, I don't know when they gonna open up New York. This might have to be my full time job. Y'all gonna have to get me for forty hours a week, bitch. Clocking in and clocking the fuck out because I might. I don't wanna say it yet. I'll let y'all know by next week. <laughs> but, yeah, I got a lot of time on my hands. So, I'm just going to be doing a lot of different things. And, um, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for rocking with me. You know, I was thinking the other day, too. Because these episodes supposed to be out long, so I have time. Like, so many people currently, like, during COVID have been opening businesses and stuff. And I see, like, people supporting. I'm like, yo... I, I be wondering, like, who is really, like, supporting me? Like, who really watches or listens to Brit Says? Like, I don't really think it's all my friends and family. Like, I really don't. I really believe that. I think maybe maybe it's, like, one family member that really rock with me. And maybe one friend. But I don't think all of them really rock with my shit. So, I'm like, damn. And I know it's hard to want to listen to somebody talk all day. Especially if it's your friend or your family or whatever. But, um... I was thinking that because, like, I don't have that much supporters, right? I think on average, I would say, like, based off of statistics, maybe 40 listeners. Like, I get maybe 10, 15 views on a good day, 20 views on a, a YouTube video. Like, if it's not, like, a popping topic, right? And then streaming-wise, I might get, for the week, like, a good 30, 25. So, that's, like, 40 or 50 people that really fuck with me. And I'm like, I wonder who these 40, 50 people are. Like, I really be wondering that. Because I used to think, like, when you start a business and you're not really, like, popping. You're not really, like, relevant. Because you, you just jumping into the podcast. Like, I'm just jumping into podcasting, so I know I'm not relevant. I'm, like, clear. You would think it's your family and friends the only people who are watching. But I really don't believe that. <laughs> and I and I know that because I could I could speak to it. 
or whatever. And I don't have a problem with that. I kind of enjoy the idea that it might be like secret listeners and watchers or whatever. People who really don't know me from a hole in the wall and they just like kind of enjoy like listening to me talk or whatever the case may be. So, with that being said, I am very grateful for whoever watches and listens and just keep rocking with me. Especially during this COVID thing, child. And I will see you guys next week. <laughs>